Okay, we'd like to welcome each and every one of you once again. Uh, we're still going through quite a bit of a recovery period due to a operation we had to have here uh, almost now a month, but praise be to God, we was able to get to go out and be in that of the house of the Lord for the first time in right out a month yesterday. Didn't make it to Sunday school, but we was able to be at uh, uh, church that morning uh, and got there just a little late then, but uh, that night we was able to return back and thank God for that. And we thank God for those prayers that has been lifted up unto us, and we still need them. We're still having to go through some things over this, and will for quite some time. Uh, but in time, uh, uh, when you know that there's people out there that can reach the throne of God, uh, calling upon that of an all-merciful, almighty, all-powerful God on that of your behalf, uh, like I'd uh, mentioned, uh, last night is me and a young uh, gentleman, a very close friend of mine, used to be his pastor, mentioned in, as we was chatting, uh, uh, he had uh, mentioned about me having the, the surgery and and how I was having to go through a lot of this pain, and I couldn't imagine all of that, and uh, how he could not even imagine be able to get through it. And uh, I had typed and mentioned to him, well, when you have people like you and uh, your family and uh, uh, your mother and uh, uh, your grandmother and your husband or uh, your your mother's husband, uh, people like that that knows and loves the Lord, praying for you. Uh, then you're a winner all, all the way around because the Bible says that God uh, hears the virtuous prayers of a righteous man and I thank God for that. I thank God that they are those out there that can touch the throne of heaven and get through to heaven on behalf of whoever it may be even if it's on your own behalf. Uh, but boy, I tell you what, the world needs a lot more people like that and where you find the greatest majority of people like this is those of our elders. And I'm telling you, there's not that many that are yet left here on the face of this earth. Uh, they've been taken, taken out of the way quickly. And uh, we really need to spend time with that of the Lord in our prayer closet and out of our prayer life. Uh, today we're going to try our best and uh, we'd like to say if you've not uh, subscribed to our channel, please do so. Also, feel free to share these videos with whoever. Uh, and if by doing so you win a soul to the Lord, then praise be to God that that soul be counted unto you. One water is one plant. God gives the increase. That's what it's all about. This is nothing directly to do with me. Uh, anything that deals with God, it should be a tool in everyone's life to be able to use it. Uh, in however way God feels uh, or that you feel in your life that God feels for you to use that too. Regardless of how it comes or where it comes from, we're all a part of this thing. We're not a joint or a split or a divided uh, church in that of the Lord. The Bible said that we are all joined together, fitted together, uh, neatly fitted together uh, uh, with one another. Uh, and uh, do feel free to use these on uh, in whatever way you see fit to use them. Uh, we do thank you for each and every one that uh, for all the comments, we still get the majority of our comments in our Gmail. When we first started this, we explained that before. We had put our Gmail up there, and that's just the way people decided to continue to go with it. Uh, and uh, we get quite a few yet that we still have to respond to in that of our comment sections down below other videos that we have been made in the past and uh, we're still in an area going on the third study and this will be another uh, kind of a, a, a topic uh, issue concerning that of the word of God I've been a little over a week and two or three days making the videos you know the best way I found to do it is do a little stop it come back later on start it up again continue on and just edit through it and uh, that way you don't have to make five or six videos and just delete 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 and keep redoing them over because uh, uh, you get to talking a lot of times you don't realize exactly just uh, in a direction you're going that you don't want to go that way uh, because of the audience you're really trying to uh, reach. And uh, for me, it's for that of the young convert. Uh, and it's for those that are not yet uh, been saved by that of the grace of God and those of the shut-in. But I have been amazed to find that uh, 
uh, I have uh, through this attractive uh, uh, all all the audiences and uh, even some uh, comments I have read in that of my Gmail how some of them spoke about uh, even as simple as I'm trying to get this that uh, how they have grabbed a hold of uh, things that has caused them to uh, to feel a fresh in that of the Lord and to feel like they are uh, growing in areas they didn't and I'm sitting here thinking well now I'm a missing something here they are running off and leaving me and and I'm a missing it you know and uh, but probably they ain't getting it just ain't realizing it but uh, I'm trying my best to give to you as God has given to me through the study research and everything uh, through many years in which I've done no doubt I may make a uh, you know, a mistake with it, that of the verbal voice, call somebody one name or that should be calling someone else, but those that uh, go and listen all the way through the video, they'll eventually get, you know, the person that I am directly in this to. But this week, we want to do a study on that, of the topic of the Word of God. With all honesty, uh, probably should have been the first video I ever made, or ever tried to make, is on the topic of that of the Word of God. Uh, and when we deal with that of the Word of God uh, and really see what the Word of God uh, is intended and that of all mankind uh, and we really see the Word of God as it being more than just that of words uh, then we begin to get a realization that they are that of a much higher, much greater power than that of anything that mankind has ever known upon the face of this earth. And we want to uh, start our study and first line up to be able to introduce you exactly what the Word of God is and how the Word of God became to be that of a living thing. And in uh, the Gospel of... Uh, I believe John, or no, in, in the book of Titus, uh, 1 and 3, it said that God manifested uh, his word. God manifested his word. What does manifested mean? Come alive. It brought, was brought alive uh, in existence. Uh, it gave us life. It was manifested, became that of, uh, transform into one thing into another thing a lot Christ be in reincarnated in that of the flesh uh, through that of a virgin woman so we find that Titus in 1 and 3 and I believe that's where that's at uh, that God manifested uh, his word or how is that possible well, let's bring the Word of God into that of becoming a live person instead of just words. And my hope is to be able to get you to understand why the Word of God does what it does in your life and how it does it and when it does it uh, at the time it does it. And that's the main purpose I want you to be able to understand about the Word of God in this video. So if Titus said, or God said into Titus, inspired Titus to write in 1 and 3 that God manifested the word. Then to find out what he's talking about, we find in John, St. John's Gospel, chapter 1, verse 1. It says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and God was the word. Skip down about 14 verses. And the Bible said, and the word was made flesh, and we do, uh, the, and the word was made flesh, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten Son of God. So in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and God was the word. But through the virgin birth, John 1 14 kicks in that we had just quoted. And the word was made flesh, and we beheld its glory, the glory of the only begotten Son of God. Beheld the flesh. In the beginning, it was the Word. 
in Matthew's gospel, it became manifested in the flesh, made alive, quickened, in order that all mankind may one day receive this same life within them. Now, I say that to say this. And also, if uh, I'm not badly mistaken, in John chapter 6, 36, Christ said to his disciples, the words I speak uh, unto you are life. The words I speak unto you, unto you are life. And that's in St. John's Gospel, chapter 6, verse 63. Not 36, 63, I believe so it's that. But the words he speak unto you are life. Now let me explain what we've come up to thus far. As long as each and every one of us lived as that of a lost person and those that are yet lost and undone without God, the Word of God is alive, but not in you. It's alive on the outside of you, knocking to get in. And it comes through and by the way of the conviction power of God. The Bible said in St. John's Gospel that no man cometh unto the Father except the son, no man coming to the Son except the Father draw him. It first must convict your heart to the point you realize you're lost and undone without God and you're heading to hell. And it's on the outside of you, though it's alive, but it is just now begin to resurrect into your life by conviction. And you have the opportunity to either shove it away to where it does not get born inside of you, but even though it will live on forever, outside of you, maybe by the grace of God, one day again knocking at heart's door, and you do accept but as long as we're lost and undone, the Word of God is alive. But it's alive on the outside, trying and hoping to get inside by and through the way of conviction. All right, once a person has received the Word of God, the psalmist David said this in 119, uh, either 119 and it's verse 130 or 131, but he said the entrance of the word giveth light. The entrance of the word giveth light. It giveth understanding unto all the scriptures, or unto all the simple. It giveth understanding to all the simple. So once... <clears throat> the living word of God on the outside of us begins to knock on heart's door and we accept that of God at that time, then it moves from the outside to the inside. And then once it takes that move from the outside of knocking on heart's door, to the point of living inside that of one's heart, then the psalmist David tells us that it is an entranced. The word is entranced of the words given light. It giveth understanding unto the simple. <clears throat> now let me tell you something. The Bible said that the word of God is plain and simple, as simple as a little child to understand. And the reason it is that way because God gives unto you what he knows you're capable of understanding at the time and the growth you are in that of your life with the Lord. Uh, you're on the milk as newborn babes desires the milk, as Paul says. So we desire the sincere milk of the word of God. And eventually that milk will begin to get on uh, what we would call baby food. And it would go from baby food to just a little bit of the food that we as grown-ups would eat, introducing them to that. 
I want to say this, and I want you to try to comprehend what I'm trying to get across to you. There's nobody on the face of this earth will ever, ever, not even the great men of God, as great as Abraham, as great as Noah, and great as Job, Job and Joel, uh, Habakkuk, uh, as great as Isaiah, all of these men, as great as they was, Paul, the Apostle Paul, there's not a one of them that ever understood every word, verse, or scripture of that, of the, of the word of God. You say, you really believe that Abraham is great of a man as he was. Did not understand all the scripture. No, because he didn't even have all of it. He died before grace came. All of the men of old died before grace came upon the scene, so there was no way they could have had all the scripture. Even in the life and the time of that of the disciples and that of the apostles, there's no way. And according to scripture, Apostle Paul was probably the greatest of them all because he was empowered and endowed with that of all the gifts of God. But yet there's no way that man could have truly ever understood every word of God. If God ever allowed man to take the whole word of God into that of his life at one time, we would every one be found inside that of an insane asylum because there's no way this human mind could ever comprehend that much of God at one time. It would be impossible. Your mind would literally melt down. So in order to keep that from happening, God gives us what we need at the time in which we need it and once it comes alive within that of our soul. And the life of that of the word of God, it breathes life into that of man's soul. And it's only through and by that of the word of God that it gives us uh, understanding. First uh, Peter 1.23 it says, "Being born not of uh, being born not of corruptible things or corruptible seeds, uh, but incorruptible." By he said, "By the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever, were reborn." As Christ tried to explain to Nicodemus, "You must be born again." This is what he was referring to. You've had a natural birth. But in order to receive a spiritual birth that can totally, completely change you into a person that you could never imagine to be, you must be born of that, of the Spirit of God by allowing that living word that's knocking on the outside for you to be able to open that door and allow that living word on the outside to come in and sip with you and you with it and become a child of God, you then become that of a part of the living word of God. It's still alive. And you're a testimony of that of the word of God unto the law, lives of those that are still lost and undone in a darkened world. Even though you may be young in the Lord, you're growing. And the, the, the funny thing about that, you may not even feel like there's no growth taking place. You don't feel a whole lot of difference. But everybody else is seeing it. And everybody else is saying something to you about it. But you're saying, where are they seeing this at? Let me tell you something. The Bible says that the word of God is quick and it is powerful. It's quick and it's powerful. When God moves inside a person, I don't care unless they've been turned over to a reprobate. If they have, this don't apply. But if they have not been turned over to a reprobate, they can feel there's something more powerful about you than once was. They can feel there's something new about you. Something that they themselves would kind of, in a way, want to get to know more about. And they're careful about the things they once said or the way they once treated you. 
because there's more than just you in the equation now. It's not you. It's what's in you that they now feel and that they now sometimes are fearful of or desire of or they're not going to be saying things that's going to totally push you away because deep down in the core of your heart, their heart, that living word that's now in you is actually being shown unto them. You may not be able to tell it until years down the road and you look back and you say, Oh, I see now what they're talking about. I can't even remember that person I used to be. I now know what they were saying. It will one day all make sense in time, in that of God's time. So we got to go and grow with that of God. We find that the word of God said in uh, 1 Peter 23 is with said that we eat born but corruptible seeds. But it's by and through that of the living word of God that abides us forever. Uh, Paul states in uh, Hebrews 4 and 12, it says, uh, for the word of God is quick and powerful. Let me go find, let me read that right real quick. I want to read the entirety of that. Uh Hebrews 4, chapter 12, I believe is where that's at, and it may be 13. Uh, no, that's not where it's at, neither. Well, it might be if I'd get in chapter 4. Yeah, it is. 4, 12. It says, For the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder the soul and spirit and of the joints of Mara, and I'll explain joints of Mara just in a minute so you can fully get a full revelation of what it's saying. And is discern, a discerner of the thoughts and intent of the heart. Neither is there any Neither is there any creature that is not manifested in his sight, but, by, but all things are naked and open before his eyes of him whom, uh, with whom we do do, to do, with whom we are to do. What do you mean it's piercing, even cut into the very joints of the mire? We're referring to bone mire here. The word of God is no problem to cut into the very heart of the hardest material that we have in our body to get to the softest part of it. And that's where your platelets are all made that's in the bone marrow of that of your bone. The outer case is hardened, but inside that bone, they are soft tissues. And that's what God is trying to say, that he takes that old hard, stony heart, and he transforms it into that of a soft, the mara, heart of flesh. That we are more compassionate. We're more concerned about our loved ones. We're more mindful of the things we see our loved ones or our neighbors or our Christian brothers or sisters do. Where we once had a stony heart, the old bone, the hard part of that of the body. It really didn't care what they did or done or anything else because you was doing the same thing. But when God moved in and softened that heart and it become alive in you, you become a new creature. And there was this thing that just no longer looked the same. It just didn't look right. It didn't feel right. It didn't hear right. It didn't see right. Things that you just was once so much a part of, could no longer be around it very long at a time. He clothed you. He allowed you to be that of an immodest person and becoming a modest person, even clothing you, even on the outside. 
where there was people once walked around half naked. They no longer want to show their nakedness because they now want it covered up where they will not cause someone else to lust after them. And they, their self, become a stumbling block in the life of that own person. And that's what the Word of God remains when he says that. It says to, we are to dress modesty. Be modest. To cover up the nakedness. The Word of God has a way to change man. If I try to change you, you try to change me, you're liable to change me into something you don't want. Same with me. And I was one day, that's something you didn't want too much of. Believe it or not, I was that person. And I will not in no way get into a lot of my background, but I'll say this much. If that living word can take and change what I used to be into what I am now, it can take the worst. And I feel like I was of the sinners. Like Paul said, I'm the chief of all sinners. It can take the worst and cause you, cause you to become the most gentlest of all creation, of all men, of all women. And I'll tell you, I, I know some ladies back in my time of day they, you wouldn't even fool with long. You wouldn't push them far. Or you'd been pushing yourself six foot up. I know people like this. But today, you couldn't get them to say a harsh word against their worst enemy. But to speak their name from their lips would bring tears because the love that that inward Word of God that has become alive, that has taken and crushed that heart, it now begins to live inside you and make that of a new creation, creature out of you. The Word of God. What else do we find about it? Well, the Bible says in Matthew 24, 25, it says, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word will abide forever. The word is something that's going to be here from the beginning, even before the beginning ever began, it was here. Whenever there was voidness, the word of God was out there summers in the distance. And after this world is gone, and we're gone from this world, the word of God will still be around, manifested. And we will be held him as he is and we to be as likened unto him one day after a while. The psalmist David quotes this in 100 and it's either 147 or 148 19. I can't remember whether it's 47 or 48 but it's 147 or 148 verse 19 he said sh uh, that he showedeth, showeth his word unto Jacob. His statues and his judgments he showed unto Israel. God showed his word to Jacob. What do you mean he showed his word to Jacob? Within that of the life of Jacob, he was one of the sons of uh, or he was the father of that of the 12 tribes of Israel, Jacob. He showed his word. That word that he showed Jacob <coughs> was the very word, <coughs> excuse me, that was promised by the seed of Abraham. He said, by thy seed shall I multiply unto thee a mighty nation. And he said, your seed shall become as the sands of the sea. That greatness. That greatness. And he showed that to Jacob through Jacob's own seed, becoming that of the twelve tribes of Israel in which he had promised unto Abraham. He showed him his word coming alive into his own life even though back then you could not even be saved. 
But yet that did not cause the word of God from not living. And that of one's life or that of uh, around one's life in order to show you the promises and the judgments of that of the word of God. But he showed him, imagine that. He showed him his word. And his word was this. Abraham unto thee will I make thy seed a mighty nation. And I shall multiply thy seed as the sands is unto the sea. And he did this that very thing through Jacob. He showed him his word. He showed him his statutes. And he also showed him the judgments unto that of Israel. He showed Jacob what God was all about. And through that, even though Jacob could not receive God on the inside, he was willing to trust God on his own behalf for what God could do for him on the outside. But now we can trust God for what he can do for us on the inside. He could only do it for them back then on the outside. And they got their favor in that of God because and through of that of obedience. And the only thing they had to go by was that of sacrifice. And it pleased the word. And it blessed the word. It was encountered unto Abraham as righteousness. The word. We also find that John 17, 17, it says the word of God is pure. What's pure? Pure gold, my friend, has the highest and the greatest values of all material, mineral materials on the face of this earth. It's pure. In other words, it's untainted. It cannot be anything wrong with it. It's true. It's filling. It cannot in no wise give you anything that could cause you harm. All good and precious gifts comes from above. There's nothing bad that's going to ever happen to no one from being around something pure. If anything, and it always does, Purity will always make a better person out of you. And it will keep you safe from diseases and harms and the things that sometimes attack our body. If you're in a pure environment and you take precautions to keep your home as a pure, as pure from disease as you can, the chances are that you're going to be less likely to catch something that a lot of other people are catching. So it's pure according to the word of God. Uh, in 2 Peter, let, let, let's read 2 Peter, chapter 2, verse, no, 2 Peter, chapter 3. 2 Peter, chapter 3. Give me just a minute to find the exact verse I'm looking for. 2 Peter, chapter 3. Uh, <clears throat> Let's start at verse 5. I want, to, I want to read quite a bit here because I'm fixing to end this video up. I don't want to take that long. What I even say to start? Verse 5. For this, <clears throat> they willingly are ignorant of and by the word of God. The heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the waters and in the waters. Whereby the world that then was being overflooded with water perished. That is the day of Noah, which it's referring to. But the heavens and the earth, <clears throat> which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved, unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition <clears throat> of ungodly men. The heavens. Dwelling places of God are going to be destroyed. Just hang on. Don't get excited. We'll get you back in your seat just in a second. But be loved. Be not ignorant. Rent. Uh, be not ignorant of this thing. That one day is with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years as a day. 
uh, when this whole world is set on fire and the whole elements of the universe are set on fire, we'll be somewhere in the distance with that of an almighty God and not being harmed or touched by none of it. We'll be in the safety and security of that of a loving God. Whether it takes a day to do it or a thousand years to do it, it won't matter because it will pass so fast because of the presence that we will be in. And that is the presence of that of God and the safety of whatever else is going on around us. But we're not through yet. The Lord is not slack concerning the promises or his promises. He wasn't slack concerning Abraham's that we just got through showing you that how God showed unto Jacob his word. His word that he promised unto Abraham. He showed it to come to life. It was made life. It become living in Jacob's life because of the promises and that of his children. As some men count slackness, but his long suffering toward, uh, toward us to, to us work, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens and the earth <clears throat> shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with a permanent heat, and the earth shall also, thy works, that are therein, shall be burned up, saving them, or, or seeing them, that all these things shall be dissolved. What matter a person ought ye be, to be, in all holy conversations and godliness, looking for the hasting unto the coming of the day of the Lord within the heavens, being on fire, shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with the permanent heat. Nevertheless, now listen to this, we, according to his promise, look for a new heaven and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness, Wherefore, beloved, believeth that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. You say, preacher, I still don't understand. Why is he going to even destroy the heavens? Because they're tainted with sin from that of Satan from way back in the days of old in the days uh, in where Isaiah talked about Satan and said, O Lucifer, how have thou been cast down from heaven? He tried through uh, sin uh, to become more mightier than God, to take that of the seed of God. He coveted what God was. And at that time, Satan was that of a an archangel. He was one of the greatest. He was a cherubim. He was covered and guarded the glories of God. But yet through jealousy and covetousness, he allowed sin to enter in and not only enter into Satan, but one third part of the angels of heaven fell with him. That heaven's that we know as today was tainted with sin from that of Satan. Satan came unto Job and God asked Satan, began to have a conversation. Satan, where are you going? He said, going to and fro up and down in all corners of the earth. Why? To see who he could destroy. To see who he could take with him when his time comes. These earth, this earth and the heavens that we as know as now my friend, in the twinkling of an eye, in an instant, will be dissolved, devoured, but we will be in the safety and the covenance of that of God Almighty somewhere. And instantly after this world has been purified again with fire, it melts it, totally melts with that of a firmament that heat the heavens of that of earth. Made new, as John said in Revelation 21, he said, And I, John, saw a new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven. Behold, all things become new. 
the moment that God takes the church out and the tribulation periods have all ended and the last soul has been put down and the last judgment has been made. This whole world will be purified by that of God himself. And it will be as though we lived in that of a garden in the, of Eden. No sin that day ever again will ever enter into the glories of God, but yet we'll have access unto this earth, into that of the heaven, where God Almighty is seated. And where Christ the Son, the, 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 the Word that became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, that awaits us. We will walk with Him as they walked Adam and Eve in the cool of the day, but it will be for an eternity. We can spend time for eternity with that of our Lord in Christ because His Word can never die. I want to cover one more little place. In Deuteronomy, back in the old Bible, in chapter 4, I believe, verse 2, it says, Ye shall not add uh, unto the words which I command thee. Now this is God talking unto that, that, that of Moses. God has spoke to Moses. Moses is speaking now unto that of the children of Israel, or that of the Hebrew children, uh, uh, and those of the mixed multitude that came out with him. And he said that, Ye shall not add unto the words which I commandeth you. And he said this also, he said, Neither shall ye diminish aught from them. That means, don't add to it, don't take away. That's the first place you find in the Word of God that you don't go to change in the words of God that's already been written in the Word of God. You don't go to be adding to the Word of God that's already fulfilled in the Word of God. There's no need for you to make a new Bible and change something that I've written down. Because once you allow me in your life I can allow the word of God to become simple in your life so you can understand it. That's as simple and as plain as it can be. But now in Revelations, now also in Matthew 24, Christ says this, he said that we're not to even take a jot or a talent away. That jot or talent means a period, exclamation mark, question mark, any of those little colon signs that may be found in the lids of God's word. Or not to add one in another place or to take one out of another place and put it somewhere else. They're to remain where they are. God did not make a mistake. His word is alive in each and every one of us. And if it's not alive in us, it's alive on the outside of us, awaiting for us to let it in, to become life in us, to change us, that people may see us as that, as they seen Christ. And they were first called, Paul said, Christians in Antioch. What is Christian? Look it up. It's little Jesus, little Christ. Little Christ. They were first called little Christ, or they were first called Christ-like. Either little Christ or Christ-like. It means the, the both. In other words, you're shining a light as he shined as he walked the face of this earth while he was manifested in the flesh. While the word became living amongst us, we saw the way he lived. He was an example unto that of a lost and dying world, how the word to be kind one to another. Now in Revelations, we find that it is spoken this way, and it is the great, great warning of that of God about messing around with that of the living word of God. That's alive, whether on the outside of you or inside of you, these words live. They cannot pass away, neither can they die, before they are quickened through and by that of the power of God. But Christ said this in Revelation, to take heed to this. It says, uh, uh, testifying unto every man that heareth the words of this prophecy, of this prophecy, of this book, of the prophecy of this book, rather. If any man shall add unto these things God shall add unto him the plagues, the plagues that are recorded in the word of God. Leprosy is a bad plague. There's a lot of diseases that's very bad that was found in the word of God. You want to add a period where a period don't need to be added? You do it. 
And I'll assure you, there will be things come into your life that you don't want to come into your life. What else does he say? Well, he also says this, verse 19. Revelations 22, 18 and 19 is where you can find this. But he says this, And if any man shall taketh away the words of the book of God, or the words of uh, the prophecy of this word, shall take away from it. Then he said, Then God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of that of heaven. You want to take a period out or a word out and change it into another word, my friend? You're dealing with your soul, eternal soul. Think about that. So, well, I didn't write it, I didn't change it, I just read it, and I think it's easier to understand. It don't matter if you wrote it or if you're a partaker of it. Sin is sin. If God says, don't do it, then we don't need to have a part of it. The word of God is true. It said it was. It said the word of God is pure. The word of God abideth forever. There's nothing that is wrong with the word of God. It's perfect in the form it's in. He didn't leave nothing out. Isaiah 40 and 8. He, he said this, that the, uh, uh, the grass withereth, the fire fadeth. The grass withereth and the fire flower fadeth. But the word of God shall stand forever. The grass withereth and the flower fadeth, but the word of God shall stand forever. I don't care how many times you want to try to change it. You're just doing damage unto your own soul and to own your own life. You can do and mess with it all you want to, but you will never, ever defile and deface the word of God. It's impossible for you to truly do that. Impossible. Because even Isaiah said, you couldn't do it. You couldn't. He said it's pure and it's going to stand forever. Uh, 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 Solomon, I believe. It's either Solomon 30 and 5 or David 30 and 5. I can't remember exactly one. It said for ever, uh, or it says even, uh, or every word of God is pure. Every word. Even where it says I. That I in the word of God is the most purest I you'll ever read. If it says A, that A in the word of God is the most purest A you'll ever find. That period is a pure, pure period. It's never been tainted because it was placed there by God. It's the purest of all writings. It's the purest of all letters. It's the purest of all punctuation marks in whatever form they may be. The perfect. David or Solomon, whichever one it said this, but it's in 30 and 5. It'll be in one of them, 30 and 5. Either uh, David, uh, saw, uh, Songs of Solomon, 30 and 5, or Proverbs, 30 and 5. But he said, He is a shield unto my, uh, or he is a shield unto them that, I, that put his trust in him. He's a shield unto them that put their trust in him. And to know that you are protected from everything about you. Even if man takes your life, they cannot touch your soul. Your soul. You've given to God and served so faithfully and held on to the righteousness. They can't touch it. Fear not what man can do unto that of the body. But fear that one which can destroy both body and soul and cast them into hell. I'm not fearing what man may do to me because my soul's for eternal. This is a earthling, earthling vessel. It's temporary. It's just a place for who we really are to live in at the time we live down here and decide on what we want to do. Either make heaven our home or hell our home. It's as simple as that. As simple as that. Luke 8 and 11. Christ began to teach about that of a parable and he began to tell his disciples and said, now the parable is this, that the seed is the word of God. It's talking about how there was a sower 
And he went and sowed seed, and some fell on rocky ground, and some fell, and the thorns grew up and choked it out, and some fell in good ground, and how it sprung up and brought forth much fruit. How much alive is God in your life? When you really accepted the Lord in your life, did you just accept him and then get up, but yet did not give him time enough to really move in? You just accepted a good feeling from him, but he got his foot in the door. Then you slammed the door before he was really able to set up home. And the devil came, or the birds of the air, fowl of the air came and devoured those seed. And evidence of what you tried or thought you got that night, you really did not get. You really did not get because you just allowed God, the convicting power of God, the goodness, the love of God to begin to flow through your body. But you had not yet fully accepted him into your life. It's real, it's true. The word of God is that of the very seed that you sow into every man's life by and through his word. And I know this video has been long. It didn't mean to do it. That's the reason I do not like to do topic studies. But I hope somehow, some way, some of you, someone has got something out of this. I leave you with this one thing. And, you know, Peter said uh, that we are born again. Not of incorruptible seed, but of corrupt, uh, incorruptible. We're not born of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible. By the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. That's what's going to get us home. His word, his living word. That's now alive in us. Was once alive on the outside, knocking to get in. But now is made alive. And as it wants us to grow, it allows us to grow at its rate. Not the rate we want to grow, but the rate he knows we need to grow. And by doing so, he knows that we won't be overtaken by more than we can comprehend. He wants to see us grow, not crushed. I hope and pray this has been a help. I know it's been a long video. I truly know that. That's one reason I don't like to do topic studies because you have to do so many, get into so many scripture verses and, and I'm not as young as I once did and I can't remember scriptures like I once did. I just have to rely on God what little I still can remember. But I thank be to God that he can bring it back to my remembrance when I do need it. Uh, where there was a time you asked me anything, I could, I could bring it off to you. I have many people that can testify that thing. Uh, of that fact, rather. Uh, but today, I may have to go look something up for you if you ask me about it, but it won't take me long to find it for you. But I thank God for the ability that I still have in Him to do whatever I can for the Lord. It's not about me, never has been, never will be. Because I'm nothing, I'm nothing but a sinner saved by the grace of God, trying my best to be a help to someone in this world. That someone, someday, some way that God that's standing on the outside, the word that's living on the outside of you, knocking at your heart's door for you to one day open, to come in and you allow that word then to become alive in you that one day that you then may through and by the living word of God see your loved ones saved. Get that vision and hold on to that vision. And every time you go to pray and you repeat the same prayer, Lord, please save my household. Please save my dad. Please save my mom. Please, what's wrong? Ain't you trusting God? What about the first time you pray it, mean it, and then when you go back, say, thank you, Lord, for the vision that I see that I know that you're now going to do in the work of the prayer that I offered up on the behalf of my loved ones. How about giving him thanks for that which you asked him of? Does not the word of God say, will not the judge of the whole world owe that? Yeah, he will. He'll do right with you, by you, like he did with everyone else. What he did for one, he'll do for the others. But you got to trust him. you got to fully trust him. Without a vision, the people perish. Visualizing the word of God becoming alive into your life of your loved ones and what you ask God to do for them, whether it's today, tomorrow, next week, or a year down the road, you've got a vision of God doing it in your life. And it will one day happen. 
Now, it, once that does, it's going to be up to them to either accept it or reject it. But God will not ignore your prayer request. And I'll assure you this much. You'll see the things of God accomplished a lot quicker if you put a lot more trust into it than what you do if you have that little bit of doubt just keep hanging on. Lord, please, I ask you to save them. I don't see them saved. Lord, save them. How about, Lord, thank you. I, I've got a vision. You're going to do this. Thank you for what you're going to do, for what you yourself promised you'd do in my life if I asked you to do it. Thank you, Lord, for having letting me have that much trust that I can visualize my loved ones along beside me in heaven one day out of a while. Without a vision, the people perish. Get a vision, church. Get a vision, Christians. Uh, allow God to live in your life the way he wants to live. The way he always intended to live. But I'm going to have to shut this down. I thank God for each and every one of you. Continue to pray for me. I pray for you. Uh, I pray that each and every one of you may one day, out of a while, see your home saved. I truly believe that. Uh, I, I'll not stop praying for those that leaves comments. I will. I take you into the closet. And me and my wife both, before we go to bed at night, we lift you up before prayer because I, I let her know what's going on concerning these videos. I let her know those that wrote things in the comment section and some in that of my emails. I let them know. But I'll tell you one thing. I hope a lot of them that's in my emails will come to the comment section and start putting them there. You'll have a, they some great brothers and sisters out there that truly knows how to get a hold of the prayer bells of heaven. And I know, I know, that's what it's going to take us all uniting together. But until next time, stay safe and may the blessings of God always be found upon you or that about that of your household. May God bless. Until next time.